All right, welcome back, third graders. We are at the end of our unit 12, and we're going to begin today's lesson on page 753. 753. So obviously this is up next in our uh, math book, and this is our review slash test. So this is going to be our last lesson before spring break. Yes, I know that they're supposed to have an, uh, a lesson on Friday, but you guys have worked so hard, I'm not going to start something brand new and just give you something to do on Friday just to keep you busy, all right? So our last, uh, our last uh, assignment before break is just our review slash test. So how we're going to do this today is you're going to, I am going to read the questions. You are going to answer it to your best ability. All right, and then we'll go through at the end, at the very, very end, and I'll, and I'll go through, I'll come back through and give you the answers. And remember, you might, your question might be, well, Mr. Klaus, uh, how, 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 how are you going to grade this? What about my grade? Remember, I've never, never been worried about your grades. You guys have heard me say this 40 billion times this year. Don't worry about your grade. Just do the best you can, all right, and we'll go over the answers. And if you missed a bunch of questions, what we, I can get you some extra work. Or when I see you guys again, I can help clarify this. But today is just to find out how much did we remember? How much do we know? All right. So if there's a question and you're not sure the answer, you can press pause. I, I, I want you to press pause. Go back through your math book. Go back through your workbook pages. If you're not sure how to do something, try to look back and see if you can remember. All right, look back to the pages before and go through. And if, you, and if you can refresh your memory, that's fine. You can use the, the things that you've done earlier in the unit. All right. And I'm going to guide you through here. And at the end, you can score your own and see how well you did. So let's see how many we got right. And some of them have more than one correct answer. All right, so let's go through. I'm going to pause this at any time and work and do your work. All right. So the first part is going to be just me reading the question. After the question, you pause it, you work on it, and I'm just going to go to the next question. All right? So number one, which words describe this shape? This shape right here. Polygon, open shape, pentagon, or quadrilateral? Notice it says which words. That's your clue that there's more than one answer. Number two. Now, once again, I say, Mr. Klaus, you're going too fast for me. Uh, no, I'm not. Press pause and work at your own pace. All right? If I'm going too fast, you guys have control. You have the pause button. Pause it and take as much time as you need. My goal in this first section is just to read through, read through the questions and kind of help you understand what they're, what they're asking you. Number two, Umberto drew one side of a quadrilateral with four equal sides and no right angles. Draw the other three sides to complete Umberto's shape. All right, so here's the clues. He drew one of these sides. Now the quadrilateral has to have four equal sides, but no right angles. So think, what shape do you know has four equal sides and no right angles? Only one shape meets that requirement. Do you want to draw that? Number three, Michael saw a painting that included this shape. All right, so he went to the art museum, and this is the shape he saw. For numbers 3A through 3D, select true or false for each statement about the shape. The shape has no right angles, true or false. The shape has two angles greater than a right angle, true or false. 3C, the shape has two right angles, true or false. D, the shape has one angle greater than a right angle. So press pause and work on that. Number four, our Venn diagram, what we worked on yesterday. All right, high level stuff here. That's why it says go deeper there. Part A, it's a two-part question. So we're going to need to look over here. And our two titles, the left circle is polygons with right angles. The right circle is quadrilaterals. And everything in the middle, you should know what that means. 
draw another plane shape that belongs inside the left circle, but not in the overlap. Okay? So any shape that belongs with the polygons with the right angles, but does not overlap into this under the right circle. We'll pause and do that. Part B, how can you describe the shapes in the section where the circles overlap? So how can you describe these shapes? Think about your two titles. Right, uh, press pause and write me two se write me a sentence describing that. Number five, match each object in the left column with its name in the right column. Match each job match each object in the left column with with its name in the right column. So you might not remember these. You might have to go back earlier into your unit. And refresh. What's a point, line, ray, and line segment? And then connect them. Press pause and work. Number six. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Don't worry, I don't have the coronavirus. I was just eating my oatmeal cream pie here and got a little stuck in my throat. <coughs> a little morning snack for Mr. Klaus. Describe the angles and sides of this triangle. All right, so think about the sides. It should have given you more lines in this. So how, how I would do this, what I would say angles. I would write the word angles and describe them. Then I'd write the word sides and describe them. That's boss and work. Number seven. Which words describe this shape? Mark all that apply. Rectangle, rhombus, quadrilateral, square. Mark all that apply. Big clue telling you that there's more than one answer. Press pause and work. Number eight. Now remember, make sure that you are pressing pause and actually doing the work and not just waiting for me to go over everything. All right? I'm not going to go over any of these till part two. So make sure that you are doing the work yourself. That's the most important thing. Divide each shape into the number of equal parts shown. Then write the fraction that describes each part. So the square make it into three equal parts. Hexagon make it into six equal parts. The rectangle making the eight equal parts. Then write the fraction that describes each part of the whole. We talked about unit fractions the other day. Press pause and work. Number nine. Han drew a triangle with one angle greater than a right angle. For numbers 9a through d, choose yes or no to tell whether the triangle could be the triangle that Han drew. Uh, now that has to be Han Solo because not many people are named Han. So Han Solo drew a triangle with one angle greater than a right angle. All right, so Han Solo loves drawing shapes in the Millennium Falcon. All right, so tell yes or no whether this shape could be the one Han Solo drew. We know that it has one angle greater than a right angle. Could Han's shape be this one? One angle greater than? Yes or no? Could it be this one? Yes or no? This one? Yes or no? Or the last one? Yes or no? Many of you did not know that Han Solo loved drawing triangles, but now that we know he does love to draw triangles. Now skip number 10. Number 10. Number 11. Teresa drew a quadrilateral that has four sides of equal length and has no right angles. What quadrilateral did she draw? Draw it and then write it down. Once again, make sure you're pressing pause and actually doing the work. Mr. Klaus, you're going too fast. Nope. Press pause, you're in control. 
Another Venn diagram here. Rhea used a Venn diagram to sort shapes. Or it could be Ray. Maybe it's Ray. Maybe it's more Star Wars characters. I don't know how to spell it. Ray used a Venn diagram to sort shapes. What label could she use for circle A? So now we've got to really think. We have to look. What do all of these shapes have in this circle in common? And that's what you're going to title is going to be. Number 13. Colette drew lines to divide a rectangle into equal parts. Into equal parts that each represent one-sixth of the whole area. Her first line is shown. All right, so you got to draw the lines. I need to make sure that it shows one-sixth. Because right now, this does not show one-sixth. Take that shape and make it into one-sixth using the one line. Number 14, Brad drew a quadrilateral. Select the pairs of sides that appear to be parallel. Mark all that apply. A and B are parallel. B, B and D. C, C and A. And D, D and C. Which ones appear to be parallel? Number 15, give two reasons that this shape is not a polygon. Now, if I was making the math book, I would have given you two lines to actually do that. So I would make a one and a two here, a one and a two. Two reasons that this shape is not a polygon. That's in the very first lesson of our unit 12. So you may have to go back and refresh your memory. Number 16. The triangle at the right has one angle greater than a right angle. What statements describe the other angles? Mark all that apply. At least one is less than a right angle. One is a right angle. Both are less than a right angle. Or one is greater than a right angle. And our last question that we are going to do today is question number seven. Uh, this is number 17, so we're going to have time. Well, we maybe have time for 17 and 18. Yeah, let's just let's see what it was. 17. Ava drew a quadrilateral with two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. The shape has at least two right angles. Draw a shape that Ava could have drawn. And number 18, 18a through d, select true or false for each description of array. 18a, is it straight, true or false? It has two endpoints, true or false? C, it has part of a line, true or false? Continues in one direction, true or false? All right, answer that. And this will complete our first part. All right. One, so make sure you work on all these. We skipped, we skipped number 10. We didn't have time for that. So go ahead and make sure you have everything answered. And in part two, I'm going to go through and go over the answers. So you are scoring your own test. I know, isn't this crazy? I love homeschooling. You're going to score your own test. If you get it right, you know, put a, put a smiley, put a star beside it. Uh, check plus, whatever you want to do. And if you get if if you're if you're incorrect, just circle it. And at the end, we'll know what we need to work on. All right. So you're kind of in charge. You are the teacher right now. I get to grade your own work. All right. So go ahead. Make sure you finished up. Uh, when you're ready, click on uh, part two, and we'll be ready to go from there.